Robert, let's start today with U.S. and international economic data. We found some information saying that the European economy is slowing as well. What can you tell us about that? Yes, Susan, it was really the second soft week for both U.S. and European data. And if we look at the European PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index, barely above 50, the break-even 50 mark uh, for October. But if we look at the manufacturing component of that, that was below 50. So European manufacturing sector contracting, the overall European economy really stalling at this point, and then focusing in on Germany, which is the key engine of growth for the European economy, both the headline and the manufacturing index were both below 50. Let's move on to housing data, which was another weak spot for us here in the U.S. We saw a decrease in September in uh, home sales after an increase of August. So what do you make of that? Yeah, the increase in August was nice to see because that, I, I think, came in part because in, uh, mortgage interest rates actually came down and some buyers came into the market, but they didn't stay. Uh, uh, so the, the, the legs in the housing market due to lower mortgage rates, probably a little bit weaker as both existing and new home sales came back down a little bit in, October, in September. Now let's move on to the Fed. And of course, we have to talk about the Fed in all of our calls. Yep. So what are your expectations coming up for uh, later this month? Yeah, we've got a uh, FOMC, Federal Open Market Committee meeting, uh, next Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, all eyes are firmly focused on the Fed right now. The big question is, do they continue their series of rate cuts? We had one at the end of July. We had one in mid-September. I am expecting to see another 25 basis point rate cut to the Fed funds rate here, uh, here at the end of October. And the language that the Fed uses to describe this series of rate cuts is going to be very important because they have focused on the words midterm correction, which sort of implies a short-term event, and then they stop. I don't know if the data is going to let them stop or not. So this is going to be very interesting to see how they describe uh, what they're going to do next Wednesday. Also, Robert, next Friday, we will have the October jobs numbers. And what are your expectations for those? Susan, this is also going to be a very interesting jobs report because it's going to capture the impact of the GM UAW strike, nearly 45,000 workers uh, off the payrolls for that month. So if you take a, a, a guess of around 135,000 uh, net payroll jobs and then you subtract out that 45,000, that's going to put you in the 90, 95,000 camp, which on, this, on, on face value is going to be a very weak number. Now, uh, we think we're going to bring those workers back. It looks like there is a preliminary settlement that has, still has to be voted on for the uh, GM UAW strike. And I hope they can vote on that, get it ratified, and get everyone back to work. But I think we should be prepared to see a fairly low uh, payroll data uh, number when uh, next Friday. Mm -hmm.